Are you looking for a faster and easier way to connect your devices to your available wireless networks? If so, WPS might be the solution you're looking for. In today's episode from Network From Home, we're gonna be diving into WPS. We're gonna be talking about what it does, how it works, and if you hang around, we'll also be going through an example so you can see the steps that you need to follow in order to implement WPS in your environment. So you see the term WPS, it's usually associated with a router and a router's capabilities. But what exactly is WPS and how does it work? Well, WPS stands for Wi-Fi Protected Setup and I actually did a little bit of research here to provide you with some context. WPS, Wi-Fi Protected Setup, was first established around 2006. And this is when Wi-Fi networks started to become more prevalent in people's homes. They would have routers that broadcast wireless networks and they were starting to see devices that could connect wirelessly to these wireless networks that are broadcast from the router. The trouble here is that at the time, this was a new technology. So a lot of people, especially the non-technical folks, they had a lot of trouble connecting their devices to their Wi-Fi networks. The solution here was WPS. Wi-Fi protected setup was created to allow non-technical people a fast and easy way to connect their devices to their Wi-Fi networks. Fast forward 20 years and WPS is still useful today. There are some people that discourage the use of WPS and say that it shouldn't be enabled on your router, but honestly, that's a video for another day. I'll be creating another video that dives into the security aspects of WPS. Okay, so back to the task at hand. Now we know why WPS was created, but let's talk a little bit about how it works. For those familiar with Bluetooth technology, WPS is quite similar. What happens here is if your router has WPS enabled and you have a device that is able to connect to Wi-Fi networks through WPS, what's happening here is WPS is first activated on your router. So your router will then send out a wireless beacon, essentially announcing, hey everybody, I'm open for business. Are there any devices out there that want to connect to my Wi-Fi networks. So if you have devices in an area near the router when it's broadcasting this signal saying, hey, who wants to connect to me? If on that particular device, you identify that you want the device to connect to that wireless network that's being broadcast, rather than having to type in the password of the Wi-Fi network, the router will actually send that information to the device that's trying to connect to the Wi-Fi network and it will establish a connection. That device will become an approved device and be able to connect to that router's Wi-Fi network all without using a password. So as you can see here, there might be some time savings associated with this. And when we get into an example in just a bit here, you'll see exactly what the savings and benefits of using WPS are. Okay, so now that we understand how WPS works, let's jump into an example. And there's no better example than my home network. I'll be using my laptop and obviously my router. Both of these devices support WPS. So I know right off the bat that we won't have any problems here. As I mentioned earlier, the first thing you need to do is you need to ensure that WPS is turned on and enabled on your router. So in order to do that, let's jump into our router settings here. Okay, so the first thing we need to do here is we need to open up an internet browser so we can get to our router settings. For those of you that might not be familiar how to do this, I'll breeze through these steps here, but I will also link to a video up above I've detailed the process of connecting to your router settings. It goes through all the minutia, all the details that you need in order to connect to your router settings. But for now, the first thing you need to do is you need to go to your router settings login page. 
you can do that by entering the IP address of your router. So I'll do that now. I'll enter 19, oops, I'll enter 192.168.0.1. This right here, it takes you to your router settings login page. So now you should log in with your username and password for your router settings. Okay, now that you're into your router settings, there are actually a few different places to go here just to verify that WPS is enabled. Keep in mind here that these are just the settings for my router. Depending upon what make and model of router you have, it might look a little bit different here, but logically everything will be the same. There will generally be the same types of settings to access and it shouldn't be that much of a departure of what I'm doing here. So first, let's jump into the Advanced tab. Okay, and the first thing that I have to do here in the Advanced Settings tab, I need to go to System Tools first. So let's expand this. Then we need to go to System Parameters. Here you'll see a few statistics or a few settings for my wireless networks, but a little bit lower here, you'll see WPS. And here it says enable WPS. So on your router, make sure that this box is checked. If WPS is not currently active on your router, you will likely need to select enable WPS and then save to lock in those changes. Okay, now that those changes have been made, the next place I need to go is I need to go to the wireless settings of my router. Under the wireless settings here, you see WPS, so we're going to select that now. Okay, and there are a few different options when it comes to WPS. In some cases, you can utilize a pin. If I were to select this option, I would need to enter this pin on the device that is trying to use WPS to connect to my router's Wi-Fi networks. Honestly, this push button selection is a lot faster and easier. I don't need to enter any pins and you'll see the benefits of it here. And honestly, that's it. Now that we know the WPS settings are good to go, we can now move forward with using just our trusty router here and the device we want to connect to the router. So let's do that now. Okay, remember earlier how I said you need to initiate the WPS on your router so it sends out a beacon to all your devices saying, hey, I'm available, I'm open for business, who wants to connect to me? Well, that's done on your router itself. Your router will likely have a WPS button on it that will initiate that pairing sequence. So let's take a look at exactly where that's located on your router. In most cases, it will be on the back. I'll get a close up for you, but it's right here. It's a really small button that you press, but let's get a close up of that now. So this button right here, upon pressing it for 60 seconds, it will send out a beacon saying, who wants to connect to my wireless networks using WPS? Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna fire it up. We're gonna press the WPS button on my router, and then we're going to run through a sequence where I forget the Wi-Fi networks for this router on my laptop, and then I connect to them again, and you'll see that I don't need a password to connect to them. Another thing to note here is that your router will actually indicate when it's broadcasting a WPS message. So let me show you what I mean. Let me press the button. I'll press the WPS button, you see this blinking light on the front right here? So this light indicates that it's currently broadcasting the WPS connect message to the surrounding area. Okay, so now with our light blinking, let me forget the wireless networks that I'm currently connected to. These are the two, or this is the network from home wireless network. I'm going to disconnect from it. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna say forget. That's the 2G network. I'm going to do the same thing here with the 5G network. I've already forgotten that wireless network. So now what we need to do 
making sure that we still have our blinking light here. Let's connect to the 5G network and you'll see getting settings from the router. And as you'll see, it will connect to the wireless network without using a password. So that's how we know that WPS is working. Pretty cool, right? How long did that take to connect my laptop to my router? Probably about five seconds when it's all said and done. I know you're probably thinking that you can connect a device like your laptop to a Wi-Fi network pretty quickly with the use of a keyboard, but the real savings here is when we're talking about smart devices. For example, a smart TV. Think about how long it takes to type in a Wi-Fi network password on a smart TV. You need to use the little cursor, go over, you have the digital keyboard in front of you, you have to scroll around to find the number or the letter that you want to enter. This is where WPS can really save you a lot of time. Rather than spending a few minutes and countless frustration connecting your smart TV or your gaming system to a Wi-Fi network, you can use WPS and it will be so much faster. One catch here is that Apple devices, we're talking about iPhones, Apple laptops, Apple TVs, none of Apple's products support WPS. So if you have a lot of those devices in your home network, unfortunately, you're a little bit out of luck. You won't be able to use WPS to connect those devices to your wireless network. And with that, that just about covers WPS. If you have any questions about how Wi-Fi protected setup works, or how you go about connecting devices to your router using WPS, please leave a comment below. If this was helpful information for you, please hammer the like button, so that way this video will get shared with other people who might be looking for answers or have questions about WPS. Lastly, if this type of video interests you or these topics interest you, please subscribe to the channel. There's going to be plenty of more content coming down the line here, and hopefully you'll find the rest of the content that I produce just as useful as this video. As always, thanks for checking out this episode from Network From Home. We'll catch you on the next one.